Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm here to do my top 10, well actually no, I say 10, I'm just going to do my top chiclet slash women's fiction books of the year. Um, now it's really hard because a lot of people don't like the term chiclet, they think it's kind of demeaning and it kind of doesn't really give much respect to the genre but I, I don't have a problem with the term but I'm going to use the term women's fiction instead because people find that less offensive so it is chiclet but it's called women's fiction instead so this is my women's fiction top books that I've read so far this year. Now I have to say this genre is one I haven't really read much of this year purely because I've kind of really got excited and discovered a lot of YA books so I've been reading a lot of young adult fiction this year as well as a lot of thrillers um, so a lot of kind of women's fiction has been put to the side and I haven't really read as much as I wanted to so I'm going to talk you through some of the books I have actually read and then I'm going to talk you through like I did in the crime thriller um, recommendation and some of the books that I haven't read but I've bought to read because I've been recommended them or because people have told me they're good um, and I'll show you those as well so they can give you some more inspiration if you're looking for some books to read so first of all I'll start off with the books I have read the first one that I read um, and loved is Paige Toon's book called The Sun in Her Eyes. Now I am a huge Paige Toon fan, I read every single one of her books, I eagerly await one each year. Um, they tend to come out kind of um, May, June time, they're kind of really nice summery reads. And this one, I wouldn't say it's my favourite of her books so far, I think probably my favourite, oh it's so hard, but I think my favourite one of her books is Pictures of Lily. Um, so it's kind of really hard to beat that one in my eyes. Um, and then and her last one called 13 Weddings is really good as well. I don't know if you can see, but she's written quite a few books, so there's quite a lot to read. Um, this is her latest one, and it's about a girl called Amber, or a woman called Amber, who um, mother's mother died in a car crash when she was young. Um, and she doesn't remember the accident, but a stranger at the scene has been unable to forget. And now, almost 30 years later, she's trying to track Amber down. Um, so Amber is living in London with her husband Ned, but she goes to Australia. Um, because her father has a stroke and he's unwell so obviously she wants to go out and see him but she finds comfort in one of her old friends called Ethan who is a gorgeous man and she's kind of torn because there's her husband at home but there's this really nice handsome man here and she kind of doesn't know what to do about it and then she gets a letter um, from the woman who witnessed the car crash that Amber's mother was in and it kind of throws it all out again so it's kind of quite a complex plot but it's really enjoyable and in a lot of page two books there's always kind of this love interest but an extra love interest so there's a woman and she's trying to decide between two men or she's kind of in a position where there's somebody she should be in love with but someone she wants to be in love with. and it's all kind of really kind of confusing and really like just great fun to read because you're kind of don't know who to choose um so this is a really, really fun book. I really enjoyed it. And if you haven't read any of Paige Chain's book before, then I would definitely, definitely go and check them out. Um, she's really active on social media and she's got a newsletter and she's got a blog and everything. So she's a, she's really fun. I love reading her newsletter and her blog and everything. So go and check her out if you haven't already. So that is The Sun in Her Eyes by Paige Toon. The next book I read this year is one that I've been super, super, super excited about for a long time. Um, I've read all of her previous books and love them. And when I heard about this one, I was like, oh, I need to read this book. And it is called The Day We Disappeared by Lucy Robinson. And that cover is just like, just stunning. I just absolutely adore it. Um, and I'm not going to talk too much about this one because I don't want to ruin any of the plot because it's quite complex and it's quite easy to spoil. So I'm not going to talk about the plot in too much detail. But it's basically about two women who both have very kind of deep secrets and they're kind of lifelong friends um and kind of their past are starting to catch up with them and it's kind of the story about these two women and how they navigate their future whilst trying not to forget their past if that makes sense um the thing I love about Lucy Robinson the most though is that she just writes with such like the way she must I don't even know how to describe it it's like every time I read it, it just flows so easily and it's so easy to read it's not like the kind of book where you kind of put it down and then kind of have to think about what you've just read as you read it you just absorb it all and it's just so addictive and you can I can never put these books down when I start reading them it's just so 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 good um so yeah definitely check that out and if you haven't read her other three books called A Total Love Affair with a Perfect Stranger um The Unfinished Symphony of You and Me and What's the other one called? This is embarrassing, I don't know this. Um, 
The Greatest Love Story of All Time. If you haven't read those, then go and check them out as well. But this one is so, 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 so good. This is probably my favourite chick lit book of the year. So definitely go and check that one out. Um, the next one I've read, I'm just going to pull off my shelf. It is Giovanna Fletcher's oh, latest book called Dream A Little Dream. Um, I've read, I don't know if you can see there, there's her previous two books. Oh, there they are. I've read um, Billy and Me and the, You're the One That I Want. And I have to say, You're the One That I Want still remains my, remains my firm favourite. Um, but I did really enjoy Dream A Little Dream. Um, it's kind of a little bit different to her other ones. It's a bit more... Not surreal, I suppose, but it's about a woman who um, is single and her ex-boyfriend. She's still friends with her ex-boyfriend, which is a bit weird, and she's kind of invited to their like, engagement party and stuff, which is a bit kind of odd. Um, but she starts having dreams about this stranger, and suddenly this stranger walks into her life, and he kind of stops becoming the dream man and starts becoming the real man in her life. Um, so it's a little bit kind of weird to start having dreams about a man and have him to appear in your life but I, you know they do, they do know each other it's not like he's just a random stranger um but it's a really lovely book i read it quite quickly i think it was about two sittings i read it in so it didn't take me long at all to read it um a lot of women's fiction books don't take me long at all because they're just so easy to get lost in um i mean it is it is sweet and it's cute and it's got a happy ending and it makes you smile but I just think it was missing that little something that you're the one that I want had um you're the one that I want was just an amazing story about um these three friends it was a kind of like a triangle friendship two one girl and two guys and it's kind of like it follows them from when they were younger to as they get older and how they all kind of start to fall in love with each other and how difficult it is to kind of be in a relationship if you still love somebody else and it was just such a good story so I definitely check that one out but this is really really good as well so that is Dream a Little Dream and I'm really excited that Giovanna is also writing more books um it seems that Penguin have taken her on for some more so I can't wait to see what comes from her next because she really can write a good book so that is Dream a Little Dream and then the last one I'm going to show you is one I have started reading I got let's see I got 145 pages in and I kind of gave up I don't think I gave up because I wasn't enjoying it I think I just got to a point in my life where everything was going a bit crazy and I didn't really have the time to read and I just kind of didn't feel like I wanted to read so I put it down and I just forgot to kind of get back around to it so I'm definitely going to finish it because what I had read I really enjoyed and it is A Parcel for Anna Brown by Miranda Dickinson now this is kind of pegged as the Miranda's kind of the dream book she's wanted to write forever um, and apparently I think I think I might be wrong um, but I think she tried to like pitch this to her previous publishers and they were like no just keep writing what you are writing and I think she finally got someone to sign her for it so I think this is kind of like her favourite book she's ever written or one of them anyway um, and it's about a woman called Anna Brown who starts to get these strange parcels delivered to her at work and they contain quite random gifts like the, the first couple of gifts that she received I think there was a scarf and then there was a brooch and I think there was a necklace as well um, but she doesn't know where they're coming from and she doesn't know who this sender is or who, who it is that's sending them is it like a man, is it a woman, is it a you know who is it nobody knows um and it's all about kind of how these gifts start to make her feel and um she it's just like her confidence starts to grow and she begins to notice her, a change in herself um and it kind of brings her out the shadow so it's quite a, a nice premise um and it, it is quite an interesting what i've read so far it was quite nice and quite light and happy so i'm interested to see where the rest of that goes um, and it's quite a chunky book um there's about 400 500 pages in this one so it does take a little while to read but yeah i would really recommend this if you haven't um looked at it or seen it already um loads of people have been loving it and raving about it so i definitely recommend picking that one up and then i'm just going to talk you through some of the other books i've bought this year that i really wanted to read and i didn't get around to reading because i just am rubbish at reading books that i buy so the first one i bought and i really want to read is called ivy lane by kathy Bradley. now this i believe is another set of novellas that have been turned into a full book i think i'm right in thinking that because they, i think it was spring summer autumn winter where there's four novellas and they've been combined into a book i'm sure this i'm sure i'm sure i'm not going mad thinking that um, and i think kathy bramley's also got another set of novellas that have been turned into a novel or are going to be turned into a novel but anyway that's beside the point um this is a 
book called Ivy Lane and it's about Tilly Parker who needs a fresh start, fresh air and a fresh attitude if she is ever to leave the past behind and move on with her life. As she seeks out peace and quiet in a new town, taking on a plot at Ivy Lane allotment seems like the perfect solution. But the members of the friendly Ivy Lane community have other ideas and gradually draw Tilly into their cosy comforting world of planting seedlings, organising bake sales and planning seasonal parties. As the seasons pass, will Tilly learn to stop hiding amongst the sweet peas and let people back into her, into her life and her heart. So it's a cute little story about a woman who kind of goes away to get some respite from her life and she kind of starts up gardening and the allotments and it just sounds really cute and really fun um, and I love the cover as well, I think it's just completely gorgeous and the back is also pretty damn cute as well. So that is Ivy Lane. The next book I bought is obviously a book that if you're a chiclet lover you've probably heard of its author more times than you care to remember um, and it is Always a Bridesmaid by Lindsay Kelk. I really want to read this but again I just haven't got around to doing it. It's got kind of an odd cover. It's like what a... it's like sh it's not shiny it's like cardboard but like shiny it's weird. Anyway this is about a, um, as the title probably tell you can as from the by the title you can probably tell that this is about a woman who's always a bridesmaid. She hasn't been the bride and she wants to be a bride. She wants to kind of find someone to marry. Um, and it's all about kind of what it's like being a bridesmaid for all her friends and things. So it's kind of, it's not an original idea but I, I really hope that Lindsay kind of does a nice original take on it. Um, and this came out... I'm sure this came out this year. Yeah, definitely came out this year. Um, again, this is a book that I really want to read. Lindsay Kelk has just released a new book for Christmas. I think it's called A Girl's Best Friend. I don't think that's right. But Lindsay has definitely released another book this year. Um, so there's a lot for me to catch up on in the Lindsay Kelk world. So I can't wait to get around to reading Always the Bridesmaid. The next one that I bought is called The Third Wife by Lisa Jaw. Now this is kind of a little bit like a cross between women's fiction and like a thrillery kind of thing. It's not quite chick lit but it's not quite a thriller. It's um, about a woman who has the perfect life um, and... No, hang on. Let me just read the blurb. <laughs> that might get a nice easier. So, um, you think you have the perfect life, you're successful, attractive, well-liked, and you've just got married for the third time. But that's okay because everyone's happy, your children are happy, and you're happy. And so is your new wife. London, 3am. A tragic accident and Adrian's life starts to fall apart because everyone has secrets and secrets have consequences, some of which can be devastating. One man, three marriages, a tangled web of lies. So that sounds pretty cool and I think the cover for this is just super gorgeous, so I can't wait to get around to this. Um, so yeah, that is another one on my list. I'm really sorry that I can't really give you much information about these books because apart from the blurb, I can't really remember why I bought some of these. Some of them were recommended to me, some of them were books I just threw and was like, I love the cover so I need that. Um, but yeah, the next one is The Love Shack by Jane Costello. I've read a couple of Jane Costello's novels before and I've really enjoyed them and this is about a couple who find their little dream home and it's a bit run down and they kind of want to turn it into their little love nest but it's quite difficult because there's just so much stuff wrong with it and it kind of gets a bit um i think the relationship there's a bit of tension between them um and you know their past comes back to fault them and all those kinds of things so it's a really kind of typical chiclet book but i love the cover and i'm excited to read that one so that is the love shack by jane costello and then the final book that i have been wanting to read since the beginning of time actually no that's a lie but since I've heard about it, is Letters to the Lost by Iona Gray. I've heard so many people raving about this book all over the internet and Twitter and Facebook and all of blogs and things like that. Um, and I haven't actually read the blurb because I kind of wanted to go into it a bit blind. Um, but I think it's about, I think it's set in the war um, and I might as well read the blurb. <laughs> he promised to love her forever, now forever is running out. In 1943, in the ruins of Blitz London, Stella Thorne and Dan Rosinski meet by chance to fall in love by accident. Theirs is a reluctant, unstoppable affair in which all the odds are stacked against them. She is newly married and he is an American bomber pilot whose chances of, survi of survival is just one in five. Seventy years later, Dan makes one final attempt to find the girl he has never forgotten and sends a letter to the house where they shared a brief yet perfect happiness. But Stella has gone and the letter is opened by Jess, a young girl hiding from problems of her own. And as Jess reads Dan's words, she is captivated by the story of a love affair that burns so bright and dim too soon. Can she help Dan find Stella before it's too late? So I love the sound of that. I just think this book is just gorgeous as well. The cover is just beautiful. So I cannot wait to get around to reading that one as well. 
So that is all the kind of chiclet books I've got to show you. I'm sure there's a wealth of books that have been out this year that I just haven't got around to reading or looking at or even noticing because there's just so many books and it's so hard to get around to reading them. Um, especially with chiclet, I tend to stick to the same kind of authors unless there's a debut that I've heard of that is just everyone is loving, which is like the Letters to the Lost that I've just shown you. Um, but things like people like Lucy Robinson, Page Two, and Giovanna Fletcher, they're all authors who I auto buy. Um, as soon as I hear they've got a new book out, it's pre-ordered and I read it. I, you know, I don't care what it's about, I just want to read it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really kind of tend to discover new authors in this genre too often, unless, like I say, they debut. Um, so hopefully those recommendations have been quite helpful and hopefully will give you a bit of inspiration as to what books to pick up. Um, kind of as we head towards the end of the year and into next year. There have been some really good Christmassy women's fiction books that I've read but I'm going to save those for my Christmas um, book kind of video. I'm going to do a whole video all about Christmas reads and a lot of those or actually all of them are kind of chick lit women's fiction Christmas books so there's going to be some more recommendations in there but like I say they're going to be predominantly Christmassy so I thought I'd leave them out of this haul but like I say I hope you've enjoyed watching and I hope it gives you some inspiration and I shall be back very soon. See you then guys, bye!